Hello everyone, my name is Nick and this video is the beginning of a journey. Today we're going to start creating a REST API from scratch. This API will be built in .NET Core 2.2 and it's going to follow all the standards and the architecture and all the guidelines. It's going to be a proper API, RESTful API that you can use in your own environment or workplace or anything you want. It's all about teaching you how you can follow the patterns and the standard and the reason for that is there's so many leaders out there that just show basically not a REST API. Just because something returns JSON does not mean this is a REST API. REST API is following the REST architecture and we're going to do that in this video series. So first let's go ahead and make our API project. So we're going to make an ASP.NET Core web application and we're going to name it, let's go with something like tweet uh, book. Sounds good enough. So let's create that. And in here, well, really, as you can see, I have .NET 2.2, uh, .NET Core 2.2 installed, but we won't go for the API option. We're gonna go for the um, MVC option, web application. And the reason why we do that is because I wanna have, for now, the individual uh, user accounts in the uh, in app, and I'll explain what that is later. For now, I will just do this and create the project, and then you can see that HTTPS is mandatory because of security concerns. So I'll create the project like this, and then I will just delete everything that we do not need. So while this is creating, okay, this is done. I will not be publishing this in the cloud uh, or in any video soon but later down the line we will show how we can do this uh, by do this i mean deploy this in azure and maybe other environments as well and how we can connect to other services so for now i'll go ahead and delete completely the http root because we don't need that and we don't need areas date data actually we do for now uh, but we're going to talk about this folder later and then models and views we're going to delete all of that and now all we have is a single controller, the home controller. We don't actually need this controller either. So we're gonna delete that too. We're gonna keep this. The only thing we're gonna change is, um, I will change this application DB context to just called DB context, actually data context. And we're gonna talk about what this is later. Here we have our app settings, and as you can see, this is using my local SQL Server DB to just generate these. We're gonna change that later, but for now we won't worry about it. Something I really wanna do at this point is I wanna remove the IIS Express integration, and I wanna run this as an application, as an EXA. So let's just delete this. And then here we have the address that uh, our application will be launched at. So this should be good enough. We need this environment variable for testing purposes. So as you can see, this does not exist now. So we have the bare minimum that we need uh, for our API. And as you can see, if you are familiar or not with um, these projects, uh, we actually need to delete some MVC uh, stuff that were left here. Uh, for now, we will delete this and this. We'll keep this because we're gonna talk about Swagger later. Use cookie policy can be removed and use authentication can be removed. We will touch upon these things later. Uh, and use MVC will also change, but we won't do anything with this now. We'll definitely remove the bootstrap integration and we don't need this cookie policy options. So basically we remove everything other than this folder, which is why I wanted to create the project in the way I did. And we will use uh, anti framework later. So for now, this is all about setting up the project. So let's talk about Swagger and what Swagger is. Now Swagger is a, a tool for documenting our API, but actually also helps us to run our API and target our API and run some things in our API. Uh, so just to eventually prove that it works, I will have to create a controller. So let's go ahead and create 
a new class and this class will be for now the test controller and this is implementing sorry extending the controller class and all we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna create a public method that returns i action result which is we're gonna talk about what an i action result is in the future but all we really need to do is return okay and then an object so something like it just can be an anonymous object name equals nick so we're gonna go ahead and also specify that this is a get endpoint and that the address for this endpoint is let's say api user something it does not matter this is not following any standard this is just to prove that swagger works so if i run this all i should see is i should be able to hit this uh, api for slash user endpoint and get this object back as a json object and as you can see this is running here so if i go ahead and i say api for slash user sure enough i get nick back and this is coming from my application so let's let's close that and this closes the service as well and what we're going to do now is we're going to add a package and this package is what we need for uh, swagger to appear here and configured and be configured so this project is called i'm looking installed i don't need that is su ash backro asp.net core we need this project as you can see it's the first one coming up a lot of downloads we need that and so let's let's just install it and it comes with all the swagger ui swagger generation everything we're going to need and we're going to quickly go ahead and configure this let's just go ahead and make a folder which we might not need later but for now i'm going to call it options uh, and options is really configuration so we could rename it in the future but i want to real quickly show you what we're going to do so let's make a new class this is the controller so let's make a new class from template called swagger options and we'll see what we're going to put in here in a bit but for now all you need to know is swagger is just another middleware that we're going to install uh, in our system middlewares as you may or may not know, go in the configure method because it's part of the application build process. And what we're going to do is uh, suager options equals new suager options object, which is the, well, I mistyped that, suager options, which is coming from our own options. And then we will actually use the configuration dot get section and then we're gonna use the name of swagger options to bind this section to the object what that means is that we can now go to the options themselves in this case let's go here and say swagger options and then we're gonna populate this object with data so the startup project the configuration will be aware that there's an object called swagger options here and we'll try to map its data to this new swagger options item so what we need to configure swagger is first we need to do the use swagger uh, call and we need to specify its root template so in our case it will be options or option dot root template equals and here what we need to use is the swagger um, endpoint this is a lot of boilerplate uh, code that you're going to have to deal with uh, and this actually does not even have to be in the dev uh, in the dev json file because this is shared across both dev and production it doesn't have any environment specific data the values we're going to need here is as we saw the json root which is the JSON root of Swagger. So this in our case will be the following. 
and then we need a description which can be our API it doesn't matter you can change that uh, and then we need the UI sorry the UI end point which is where we're gonna go to find swagger really so this would be v1 for slash swagger dot json so these values need to be created in our object 2 which is the json object actually the swagger object sorry and this will be lowercase and this will be description so now we have the options here we have the same object in the configuration so what we can do is we can say hey option is swagger options dot json root and the next thing we need to configure is to configure the swagger ui so use swagger ui and again option or options and we're gonna say option dot swagger endpoint that's what we need comes from swagger options dot ui endpoint comma and then we're gonna specify the name so the name is a description it can be anything you want we also need to configure the services for swagger to work so i'm gonna go after mvc and i'm gonna say that services dot add swagger gen let's just say anything uh, this requires some uh, boilerplate configuration again and um, this could be x dot swagger doc and then we just give a name in our case it will be v1 again at this point it does not really matter we're just setting it up we will talk about what these are later and then we're gonna set the title of the api and we're gonna say to it book api and then version equals v1 at this point this is all we need so if i run this sure enough our api works you can see the v1 here which is what we configured in this little services thing and then we can actually see the definition of our endpoint with a friendly name this is coming from controller so i can try this endpoint i can run it it has no parameters and sure enough it returns a 200 with the object we configured there so here we go this is how we quickly and easily configure swagger for dotnet core 2.2 in the next video we're going to talk about api root templates and all about versioning and versioning our api and why this is very important thanks for watching subscribe if you like this video and leave a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next video Keep coding.